my body's not right, my body's not good enough, my body's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. And so that body hatred cycles over and over. It is tough enough for college students to focus on school, work, and their everyday lives. But as an athlete, the pressure to succeed can really take its toll. That quest for perfection, both in the classroom and on the field, can become a dangerous mix. Tonight, 7 Eyewitness News reporter Sarah Johnson sits down with one woman who understands the struggle firsthand and is using her story to help others. And our culture tells us all the time, go on a diet, you'll be happy, right? Control your weight and you'll have expensive cars and lots of friends and be invited to parties. And so the message is, if I control that, then I'll be happy. For Catherine cook that quest for happiness began decades ago when she was just 13 years old. Even in this photo, a young Catherine says she remembers feeling chubby. But there was one incident that catapulted those feelings into a full-fledged obsession. We were playing on the inner tube and I fell off and everybody flipped off and she said, you know, that wouldn't have happened if you weren't so fat. It was at that moment Catherine says her determination to be thin began. I started off dieting, which then evolved into anorexia, which means that I was um, pursuing thinness uh, beyond to where it was healthy for my body. I remember one day aerobics was the thing and I went to three aerobics classes and ran six miles just to undo what I had eaten the day before. That obsession continued for years well into her late teens. It became a dark secret that consumed her. A secret that was with her even as she swam at the division one level for Utica College. So just being an athlete's exhausting anyways but not having the the nutrition that I needed and spending so much time really in conflict with my body um, was hard. And that conflict is one millions of people are battling every day. In the college age population, eating disorders are very prevalent and they certainly go across all barriers, both socioeconomic, with gender, with race, with different cultures. Carissa Olschuld is a licensed clinical social worker and the eating disorder team coordinator at the University at Buffalo. She says the academic pressures of college combined with the pressures to perform athletically, all while maintaining the cultural standards of beauty could act as a trigger for eating disorder behaviors. Coming to college is a huge adjustment and change and certainly they may be in different states of remission or recovery that can really kind of amp back up once they are here. And experts say some sports put participants at risk more than others. Baltimore-based psychologist Dr. Stephen Crawford says cross-country swimming and diving all set up the athlete to achieve a lean body. And sports like gymnastics and ice skating, where the athletes are judged on their lines and their form, could also act as potential triggers. Promoting some of the symptoms. But Oshold says there are warning signs. There might be some fear or preoccupation surrounding food. So if they're looking kind of tired and worn out, it's really important to ask what's going on. Catherine is now years into her recovery. She is a researcher of eating disorders and also a sounding board for those battling the dark secret. She says now when she looks at this picture, she wishes she knew what she knows now and has since worked to live her life as the person in this picture. Happy, healthy, and strong. I always thought for a long time that if someone else didn't see you, that you weren't seen. And what I realized as I've done all this work and my own personal growth is that you can really become the person who sees you. And that in and of itself is life changing. And although Catherine was able to seek recovery from her disorder, others are not so lucky. The American Journal of Psychiatry says those battling eating disorders have the highest mortality rate linked to any mental illness. So Jeff and Ashley, psychologists say if you start to notice any of those signs, it's best to seek treatment. Yeah, it's so important for everyone, anyone dealing with this to know that they are not alone, that there is help out there. Definitely. And Sierra, I know you put a lot of work in here and you have some resources to pass along to people. We definitely do. Anyone dealing with an eating disorder can call the Eating Disorder Association of Western New York. I'll be posting its contact information and a link to its website with the story directly on WKBW.com.